All right, moving on. Never thought I'd really say this, but if you're looking for a place to hide out from the markets in their wild swings, maybe there's an unlikely candidate. It might be Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency is held up while stocks have gotten slammed in the last week. Brian, um, how are you trading the CBOE Bitcoin futures on a day like today? Well, it's held up so-so, and if I'm looking at the November future, I'd actually be shorted at 6400 looking for it to trade down to 6200 I'd have a tight stop up at 6500 This is a pretty tight range, Jackie. I've, I was bullish on it, and I had kind of a wide range, and then we just kind of sat here. And I think that's been the trend for Bitcoin recently, is that, too, has been making lower highs, and it's sort of consolidated over the last few weeks, and then sort of cracked a little bit to the downside. So I think that's going to provide some downward pressure. Now, I will say, if we get back above 6500 Technically speaking, that's very bullish, I think, for Bitcoin. And then I can think it can scoop back to the upside here. But yeah, you're talking about hiding out somewhere else or whatever. I think the effect of higher interest rates is having an effect on gold prices. It's having an effect on any alternative to the U.S. dollar. And that's affected Bitcoin. But I think longer term, we're still going to continue this full out bottoming process in Bitcoin. I think ultimately, I don't foresee us going below 6000 or 5500 Scott's going to probably disagree with that. Mm. But I think near term right here, we had a few technical shakeout breakdown. We are sort of trending lower and I expect us to maybe hit 6200 before we then bottom and go higher. All right, Scott, I am curious to get your thoughts on this. <laughs> uh, you, Jackie, you know, the thing about Bitcoin that strikes me is uh, the, the lack of volatility recently. It just seems inorganic. It seems unnatural. I mean, given the amount of volatility we had since the futures were launched and now we've gone nowhere. And here's the problem. It doesn't rally when the stock market does have a really tough day like yesterday. So it's not a place to hide out. You know I don't like it. Uh, I don't think it has any value, so I would never be long it. I would occasionally be short it. I think that this is a really good time to be short it because you are selling a relative high. Uh, but I'm just, Jackie, I'm struck by the fact that it's inorganic, that the movement is inorganic, and I'm not certain it's anything that can really be traded on a really short-term basis right now because of that. We'd love to find out what is behind all that. All right, Brian, well, final word to you. Well, I will say in terms of the lower volatility, if you look back at actually the price of Bitcoin and the short future that it has, you know, going back to 2011, 13 or whatever, when it really materialized, and periods of time when it was traded in tight ranges, actually resulted and manifested into a bullish uh, run shortly thereafter. So I think it gives people more confident that a currency can kind of, you know, I'll call it a currency or whatever you want to call it, is sitting still here because I have more confidence in owning something like that rather than seeing something sort of free fall like we saw back in February and March and whatnot for the beginning part of this year. So I think that's actually a bullish factor. Just near term, I think maybe we sell off a little bit. Technically, it's due to sort of pull back and test at 6,000 level. Okay, let's get the risk reward on this trade. Brian is selling the CBOE Bitcoin futures at 6,400. He's targeting a move down to 6,200. Each contract a little bit more than six grand. So he's risking 100 to make 200 on this trade.